Thanks, Dean Feinstein. Uh, so now I'm going to um, inter welcome a friend to children and families in the Nebraska legislature, Senator Matt Williams. He was elected in 2014 to represent the 36th district, which includes Custer, Dawson, and northern Buffalo counties. He's from Gothenburg, where his great-grandfather settled in the 18, 1890s, farmed, ranched, eventually went into the banking business. His family lived through the farm crisis and knows firsthand what it means to work hard together, to hold the community together during some tough times as well as moving it forward in changing times. He's the chairman of the board of Gothenburg State Bank. He's been very involved in economic development in Gothenburg and Dawson counties and is president of the Gothenburg Area Chamber of Commerce. Welcome, Senator Williams. Thank you very much. It is an absolute honor and pleasure for me to be with you today and share some thoughts that uh, you and I are on the same page with. You probably are wondering what qualifies Matt Williams to be up here talking about education. I want you to know that I graduated in the half of the class that made the top half possible <laughs> in Gothenburg. And, but I was smart enough that I, I went down the road to Lexington and married the valedictorian of <laughs> Lexington's high school class, which has served me well all my life. Thriving children, thriving families, thriving communities. Are those terms mutually exclusive? I don't believe so. I believe if we invest in having thriving children, we will be on the road to having thriving families and we will undoubtedly have thriving communities. Traveling around my legislative district and hearing all the discussions of what's going on in Nebraska, there are two dominating issues that we as state senators, Senator Linehan and I and others, here. One is our current tax policy and how that affects each one of us and in particular in that discussion is a discussion of K-12 funding. The second issue is workforce development. We have 55,000 jobs in our state today that are going unfilled. 50 5,000. What is our solution? There is really only one solution to the dilemma of tax policy and workforce development, and that's finding ways to grow our state. And I will tell you, I don't believe there is any more important ingredient in growing our state than education. Thank you. And, and it's education at all levels. Yes, it starts with early childhood that we are here to talk about today. But it is K-12. It's our university system. It's our community college system. It's our private universities. It's all of it working together to build a workforce to build our state. As mentioned in the introduction, I've had the opportunity to work with economic development across most of our state for a long time. And I will tell you, there are two things that are necessary to have a thriving community. And if you want to recruit people to your community, you have to meet their educational needs and wants, and you have to meet their medical needs and wants. You won't move your family to a community that doesn't provide that. And I will tell you, our expectations have changed since I went to high school and since my kids went to high school and now my grandkids. The expectation that we have now is that with 75 percent of the parents of kids working, think about that, 
in Nebraska, the statistic that you have seen, 75% of all parents are working. That's 10 percentage points, by the way, higher than the national average, which is 65. We have the expectation as parents and grandparents that the school will provide before school opportunities for our kids, after school opportunity for our kids. We will take care of the needs of the physically and mentally challenged kids that we all have in our schools. That's our expectation today. And that has certainly changed over time. One of the things that I've enjoyed having the opportunity to do is speak to teachers sometimes on their first day of class when they've gotten together and thinking about their responsibility as teachers. And I've often walked up to that young teacher like Tabitha here and looked them in the eye and said, I'm going to trust you. I'm going to trust you with my most important asset. That's what you are faced with every day. I'm going to trust you with my most important asset, my kid. Do we have a more important asset in this world than our children? Are we willing to take that commitment and that promise and raise it to a new level? I think we are. I was staggered a little over a year ago when the early Buffett Childhood Institute released the results of their survey that they took of child care providers, 1,600 of them across our state. What were the results of that survey? This group of people were struggling with low pay, no health and retirement benefits, uneven preparation, Dean, and stress. Ooh, stress. And I tell you, we're trusting our most important assets to people that are struggling with those issues. I've said it before, and you will hear me say it over and over. Would we trust our best athletes going to one of our public universities with a coach that is struggling with low compensation, no medical and health benefits, uneven preparation, and stress. Well, yeah, they're going to have stress, <laughs> especially if there's a frost warning out. Uh, but I, I, I think that's where the rubber meets the road on this whole issue of what our commitment as a state needs to be, should be, and has to be for meeting the needs of our kids, our families, and our communities. You get it. And many people in our state get it. But where do we go from here? What is our challenge and what can you take back to your community, back to your school, back to the state with these State Board of Education members to make a difference in the future? There are only three choices that human beings make when faced with adversity. Have you ever known that before? It's absolutely true. When you're faced with a challenge, you've got a choice and you're going to do one of three things. You're going to quit. You're going to blame. 
or you're going to step up and accept the responsibility to work together for positive change. Step up and accept the responsibility of working together for positive change. You would not be here today if you were going to quit. You've all seen what blame does and how good that serves us, so that doesn't work. So we've only got one choice, and you wouldn't be here, and you are here because you're making that choice, and that's the choice to step up and accept the responsibility of working together for positive change. We as people are dreamers. You ever think about that? When you go to bed at night and you start thinking about what tomorrow is going to bring, and you start dreaming, and I challenge you today to dream big. But your dreams are just dreams unless you do one thing. You know what the difference between dreamers and achievers is? Action. We can dream all we want, but until you take action and turn that dream into reality, nothing happens. So today, as you are presented with the opportunities to learn more, about why early childhood makes the economic difference. Back to where we started. Education is the key to growing our state. And if we don't start it right, there are no second chances. So I challenge you, step up, dream big, and be the action hero. Take that step of action. Thank you for be inviting me to be part of this. You have my commitment and pledge that I will do everything I can in the state legislature to support the efforts of early childhood education and all of education at all levels. Thank you and have a great day.